Yo, what up my tubers? We're back for some more drafting on the streets of Arena. Let's see if we can run this town. Uh, Arena Cube, you know the deal by now. I have been actively avoiding all aggressive decks on my stream. Just ended the stream today, forcing another control deck. Uh, and we've, we've had some varying success. Um, what it feels like is I force control and either we go like 1 and 3 or we go 7 0 and there's like no in between so I don't know what that means um I will say if you are going to draft the control decks in this format you really need to pick up the good removal aggressively so any of the wrath effects or super cheap efficient removal uh, are really high on your list of things now as we jump into our pick one pack one I don't have a favorite card here uh, I think the Coven is actually going to be the best choice. You'll remember this card from Alchemy Draft of Baldur's Gate. And uh, I think this was, what, one of the top two rares in that format. Still very, very good in the cube. Not my favorite card, but still good in a control deck as well. I mean, six mana for a 9-9 nine -nine worth of stats with abilities. Too good to pass up. So we'll first pick the Hourglass Coven. See where we go from there. Ooh! Ooh! Notice how many black pips are in this pack. A lot is the answer. The top three cards alone, Worm, Cavalier, and Agademes. Nine black pips. And I mentioned that because at the very bottom here, we do have the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Every time I play against a mono black deck, we just crush them. Like... I don't know if Mono Black is actually all that good in this format. We have some other very good cards. I was talking about the Wrath effects. Sweltering Suns is kind of like that. We have a Discover the Formula, although, and we've mentioned this before, this is much worse in this version of the cube. Okay, let's try something different. I'm going to take the Grey Merchant here and plan on wheeling one of these black cards. Let's, uh, let's do this. Rankle now, Graveyard Trespasser. Two very good blue and white cards, Intervention and Teferi, but I think this is a good plan. I actually like Rankle less than Trespasser. It's surprising how much work the Trespasser does just as a random 3-drop. Forcing Mono Black, Gaunti and Citadel. Let's take the Gaunti, plan on wheeling the Citadel. Okay, this is going to be fun. Thoughtsies, yes, 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 yes. Yes, love it. I have not done a mono black deck in this format yet, and uh, well, this is going to be a fun one. Mono color decks we have done before. Green, red, and white. I think blue is definitely the worst of the mono colors you could try. Blue in this cube is more of a supporting role, I think, uh, for the control decks. But yeah, Thoughtseize looks great. Maybe we can wheel Blood Fountain or something. Into I'm going to take Cold Steel Heart here still. Ramp is good, and uh, I don't think these other cards are all that important anyways. Could also take Collar, I guess, for the aggro matchups. Look at that start, though. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Maybe I took the, uh, the heart just because I wanted a pretty curve, but <laughs> I like that a lot. If somehow we don't wheel any of those three black cards out of the um, Cavalier, Worm... Agadim's pack, something's very wrong. Okay, Infernal Grasp, Eldest Reborn, similar to the Basilisk Collar, Shadow Spear, also fine here. Let's go with the removal, I think, the cheap removal. Eldest is quite solid as well, but yeah, I'm going to go for the two mana removal spell here. Dude, what a start. Let's just cut that heart real quick. Take a peek at that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mono black curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Uh, we were looking at stats based on the 17 lands tracker, and apparently in best of one cube, the player on the play wins 55% of the time. Uh, which is a crazy stat because, um, in Magic anyways, just baseline 55% to win purely on the die roll is crazy to think about. As we get a Bankbuster here. 
Mm, hearse, we're not going to play. Unburial Rites is like fine. We'll just take another creature removal spell. Don't know if we're going to run that one. And especially in this version of the cube, going back to the 17 lands data, uh, where aggro seems to be a little bit better than uh, the other strategies, that really changes the, uh, the on the play factor. I didn't check the best of three stats. And maybe I'll do a couple of best of three drafts uh, before cube goes down, but I do prefer playing more games versus more other decks of a wider variety, I guess. Uh, what was that Massacre Worm pack? That should be coming up, right? Did I go Coven into Grey Merchant? So this was our wheel, or whether Bankbuster was our wheel. The Worm, the Cavalier, or the uh, Agadim should be next. I would not be surprised to get all three back. Most likely Agadim and Cavalier, though, yeah. Wow. Really, I mean, Steam Vents, Sacred Foundry, Sweltering Suns, Discover the Formula. In the old version of the cube, these would all be super high pickups for me. Okay, we'll take the Cavalier here. Solid creature, lifelink, removal. Can't really go wrong with that. Journal, no. Barons, yes. If we're mono black, we can support a couple of uh, colorless lands. This one has good utility. Like, we'll play Field of the... Uh, not Field of the Dead. Um, Field of Ruin. If we can find that in a pack that doesn't have much, for example. What else? Bonders Enclave would probably just randomly make the deck. Not a, I mean, nobody's taking the duels. <laughs> uh, what else are the key cards? There was a Rankle at some point. It might have already gone around again, or rather somebody took it. So somebody uh, was asking in the comments, what do I mean by a wheel? And that's where you, if in a pack, you say have like a Gaunty and Trespasser. You take the Gaunty the first time, and then the pack comes back around and you get the Trespasser. Wheeling it means to get the uh, card back the second time you see it. I'm not sure if we're going to run that Blood Fountain. Seems like there are probably better ways to get interaction with the graveyard. Okay. Pretty decent first pack. Pretty unfortunate second pack here. There's a Mind Stone and not much else for the Mono Black. I don't think Demonic Pact is good. You really need ways to interact with the Demonic Pact, either bouncing it or sacrificing it or whatever before you would want to play this. So I guess we're taking Mind Stone. Again, it's fine. I don't mind running ramp in these style of decks, it's just not preferred. Don't get me wrong, I could be taking cards of other colors. Um, this is more, we're trying to force it after getting the Coven into Grey Merchant, so. Think of this as a stipulation, if you will. So no wrinkle on the wheel, somebody took the worm. Um, we want like Knight of the Ebon Legion type things. There's a coma here. Shouldred's obviously great, and we'll probably end up wheeling the go blank would be my guess. Yeah, very strong pack, coma, Minsk and Boo. Uh, Thirst, Invoke, March, all good. Let's take the cheap removal here, plan on wheeling the Invoke. The person that took Massacre Worm could take Invoke, but I feel that that's probably pretty unlikely. We really would have liked, uh, man, if Nykthos was in this format. Nykthos would be... Actually, you know what? Nykthos would not currently be good in my deck. I have very few black permanents in the early game. It's all removal, which doesn't add to Nykthos, or colorless cards. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, we need the early game plays. We need, like, Knight of the Ebon Legion, and... 
I guess Mesmeric Fiend's not in this. What's that one two? I always forget its name. The not the duelist. So the one two that like takes a card from their hand. I'm sure this will be fine. Shambling Ghast. Not a card I think we want. Man, Brawl's Expertise, Magma Opus, Rekindling Phoenix. This Evangel is one of the best creatures in the cube. It's crazy how good this is. I had this with Luris uh, the other day. And oh my gosh, is that insane. Anyways. I guess we could take Retrofitter Foundry. I don't even think we would want to play this. It's just so slow and dirtily. It's something to do with our mana if we have nothing else to do, but, uh... I mean, I guess I'm not going to run Bonders. Or rather, that's going to wheel, so is the Shambling Gas. So we'll still take the Retrofitter, but that's weak. Foul Play or Sigiled Sword. Another really weak pack. I guess we could take Takenuma. That's fine. Foul Play is kind of on the weaker end of removal, and we have some already. Okay, taking the land. It's okay that we might be getting cut off a little bit in this pack. As long as we keep seeing the good black again in pack 3. Which would be the expectation. Uh, Frixian Arena would be good. I think that's in the cube still. Turgrid... Spawn of Mayhem. Let's see, whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card. So there are some synergies that you can get here. Like if you go turn 6 Turgrid plus Thoughtseize, that's kind of nice. I'm not sure if we're extremely aggro enough for the spawn. We don't have the early game black plays. Although... Turgrid is very, very likely to wheel, so I guess we'll just take the Spawn of Mayhem. It's a good creature. There's a Gutter Bones. Alright. Starting to find some of those cheap creatures, at least. Um, oh, there was a Yawgmoth somewhere as well, wasn't there? Was that in pack one? I, I vaguely recall a Yawgmoth. That might have been in one of the... Initial packs here in pack two. Wow, as we get literally nothing here out of this pack, pick eight. Gross. So gross. Sheesh. Okay, there's the pact on the wheel. Ah. God, the shrine here. There's the go blank. Okay, we knew that. Hmm. That pack two was bad. No two ways about it. That that pack was just very bad for us. But with one more pack to go, I, I think this is fine. There's the invoke despair. Good. Also expected. Would have been very unfortunate if that didn't get... Passed along. Sheesh. Enclaves a maybe. I mean, I guess it's fine. There are some rare circumstances where if we draw... Um, invoke Despair and both of these colorless lands on turn 5 or something... Or like Mind Stone with one of them, yeah. Downside's very low. Upside's probably good enough. Power 4 or greater? Actually, maybe that's not good enough. How many 4 or greaters are we going to even have? I guess we'll find out in the end, but... Okay, pack 3, let's go. We opened Ayaya, Power Word Kill, and Gifted Eitherborn. There is a decent splash card there, but I think we're just going to stick with the mono black. I'm going to take the Ayara. This is the card that is most likely to wheel, but uh, 
I'm just gonna first pick it anyways because I don't really care about gifted. And power ward kill is fine, but we st I need the creatures still, and Ayara is a good one. Shakedown heavy versus Ebon death. I am not a fan of the Shakedown Heavy. It's a fatty for three mana, but... Your opponent can just let you... I mean, it's not bad. Ah, and you know what? The Ebon Death wheels all day, every day anyways. Okay. We'll get heavy. Yes! Yes! The good one drops. Slamming this uh, Knight of the Ebon Legion and hoping that the Dread Wanderer comes back around. Fantastic. Good. Witch of the Moors. That is not so good, but we do have Sign in Blood. Also have a Celestis and Treasure Map, which aren't awful plays either. I mean, this is one of those cards where we can wheel it as well. I don't think I've never seen it. I don't think I've ever seen a Sign in Blood not wheel, so I guess Celestis and Map might be a little bit better here at the end of the day. So looting versus scrying and ramping. I guess we'll take the two drop artifact. There, that's the card I was talking about. Acquisition Expert. It's not great, but it's good enough. Angerback Walker. There's a boat here? Boat's pretty good too. Okay. Yeah, this was a very good pack three for us. Right now, my top cuts are, like, Bankbuster. And... I guess Expert's not, like, that good. It's just something to do early. Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, Wizard. Cleric, Snow. Two Rogues. Two Warriors. No wizards. Eh. Maybe the bank buster's still better than it. There's Frixine Arena. Ooh, 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 ooh. Village rights and Bastion of Remembrance, though. Okay. Um. That's interesting. What do we want more? Which three mana enchantment? I think I'm going to take Bastion and Wheel the Arena, would be my guess. Don't think we're playing Painful Bond. I don't know, maybe this was the wrong pick. The card advantage that you can get from the Arena is kind of nice. And since we're not super aggressive, it's not like this is all that important for us. Hmm. Ob on the wheel. We didn't see Hive of the Eye Tyrant, or if I did, I passed it. Alright, I mean, this looks good enough. Not sure what I'm, what else I'm expecting if I'm forcing mono black, but this is... This is where we are! <clears throat> good, I don't know. But it's something different. The only, like I mentioned earlier, the only mono color deck I'm scared to play, which would probably not be very good, is the uh, mono blue. I think if I pick up Arena, we're going to cut the go blink. Cut the mind rot, maybe.
Uh, creatures to trigger Bonders Enclave. Four or greater. So one, two, three, four. Maybe five. Maybe six. That's not good enough. That witch is probably not good enough. Okay. Did not wheel the arena, so yeah, whoever else took the Massacre Worm probably ended up taking a lot of the black cards we wanted, but like I said, I think we still ended up with a pretty solid deck overall. Oh, is that too many playables? Oh, too many lands, okay. So we can throw that Go Blink back in. Or Bank Buster? Yeah, well, now we'll throw in the bank buster. Mono black, let's go. Trying something fresh. Can't be can't be worse than yesterday's one and three. Knock on wood. Okay, round one we go. We are on the draw. Hmm. I guess we have to keep this though. Turn one. Ooh. Turn one, Thoughtseize. Let's go. What you got? They are... Wow, they are missing land. We gotta take the Ophiomancer here, I think. Instead of the Harvester? Yeah, Ophiomancer with Deadly Dispute's probably a little bit too good. And we go Cold Steel Heart here on black, of course. Because turn two treasure map doesn't do anything anyways. Oh, and they missed on land. Okay. So we'll go ahead and just get the spawn online. Start the beatdown plan. Okay, well. Not much to say there. They're, uh, yeah. They missed land. Uh, something, something. That's magic, baby. Good beats. Go to the next round. Okay, on to round two after our non-game one. I like this hand. It's a little bit land heavy, but uh, treasure map hopefully can find us some action. Unless we find a two drop off the top instead. So I can just start flipping the map ASAP if I want to. Instead of playing the Ayara, I think we're going to do that. Uh, we'll keep that too, that's good. Then go land pass. We can grasp their first play, assuming it's relevant. Yeah, that's fine. Build a ramp. Scry. That's good too. We'll be able to cast that next turn with the uh, hourglass or uh, treasure map flip. I think we'll lead on the Ayara. That makes all of our subsequent black creatures drain for one. Damn. I get to kill my map. Okay, good beats. That is actually pretty good with a Yara. Maybe I'm supposed to main phase that. Let's do that. Okay. Because so we kind of want to just find some lands here. I guess I should have played Gutterbone, sacked it first, and then seen if we still wanted to. Oh, this is pretty good. Invoke Despair gets to kill the Minskin Boo. So they sack their Knight of Autumn, they sack their Minskin Boo, and then they lose two life and I draw a card. Nice. 
And we just, this doesn't have menace, right? Nope, we just pass. So Hourglass Coven into Shouldred. Or maybe if we draw land, we just slam the shoulder down. We'll see. So they're running four color? Green, black, red, white. Hmm. Ooh, that's not good. Wow. They're gonna punch my Ayara with something? Tremoka's command. This is sacrifice another, so. Can't sack Ayara to herself. They might attack here. They might be okay trading the damage like that. Oh, actually, I, I could just block if that was the case. Alright, hourglass it up. Let's do the drain to. Let's do Drain Drain. Might still be hard to beat the Henge, though, if they have just a couple of creatures to follow up. But do they have Wrath? Alright. Uh, I'm not gonna block. They have it, they have it. At least if they do have Wrath, we still have Shouldred in hand for hopefully next turn. Oh. Yikes. Okay, that wasn't that bad. Yeah, they're just going, popping off with the Henge though. So I drain them for four. Found our Shouldred. And they do have a swamp, so Shouldred does have a swamp walk here. Okay. One of the issues with Mono Black is that it has no ways to deal with like enchantments and artifacts, right? I guess I guess technically my invoke can kill an enchantment of their choosing, but like the henge just sits on the battlefield and I can't do anything about it. Oh, this is all okay for us, though. If they again, if they don't have a removal for Shouldred, maybe we can survive. But they're just drawing so many extra cards; it's hard to beat. So I think we ship everything in front of the uh, Gargaroth. That way, even if they kill this Hourglass Coven, they still are putting 7 damage on the Gargaroth. And if they kill the main Coven, I get to reanimate it with Shouldred.
Oh, that great henge. So disgusting. All right, they're, they're ordering the drainers first. I'm okay with that. Oh, wait. No, they killed the main one. Really? Jeez, of course. Okay, good beats. And that's probably game over. Well, that does get back gold red, but it's probably too late. Hmm. Damn. Okay. Kills my hag. Drains for one. Baba La Saga. They can sack the tra or the clue if I double block the tracker so that doesn't even work. I think we just have to hope. Grab shoulders and pray. Any believers? I don't actually think they were supposed to sack the clue because the clue with Baba La Saga was really good. What is going on here? And they just have another removal spell. Alright, good beats. Yeah. I mean, we got soloed by the Great Henge. Not much to say about that. Had a chance. But uh, the Great Henge just drew them way too many cards, and so they were able to draw into a bunch of removal. GG's. Yeah. That's a problem with Mono Black for sure. Lack of interaction for artifacts. Once that Henge resolved, unless they completely bricked for like four turns, I don't know if we could have won that. We go next. So a non-game, round one, and then we got crushed by Henge, round two. Oh, if this had anything to do on turn three, I think we could keep it, but... Turn one Thoughtseize into nothing for three turns is not a good plan. I ship that down. This is better. But still not great. Yeah, man. Oh, a Phryxian Arena here would be so, so clutch. Werewolf Pack Leader. Alright, let's just get the Ayara down. We can kill the pack leader later. Oh, looks like they might have a punch effect. That's fine. Command, or there's something called like ravenous something. Oh, that's not it. Well, neither is that, actually. There was a little bit of temptation to kill their uh, Elvish Mystic there. But they can't really try to kill my Mind Stone here, otherwise I can just sack it in response anyways. Oh, 
All right, that is fine. Yeah, versus a creature deck. Ooh, especially if we can get one of the Coven Hags that uh, give minus two, minus one. That looks really nice. There's one of them. Jeez, the skeleton's really good here too, though. Skeleton with a Yara is insane. But I think we go for the kills. Alright, well, we hit the double kills. With the Takenuma draw, we can actually sack the main coven and then bring it back later, too. It's a pretty rough spot for a green white to be in. <laughs> Iliad, yeah. Interesting. I don't mind trading here. They're going to give it lifelink, I guess. So do we want to sack this coven now before they can gain the lifelink? No, I think just clearing off their board is good enough. card. Smack in. Might have been slightly better to pass, but... And not play the heavy, because then I could uh, activate the ta Takenuma and get back the the hags. Sure, that's fine. Mm, that goose just dies to the hags here. Tank Buster's good. Yeah, so they can kill my uh, bank buster by removing two counters, but that doesn't really matter. That also just dies. Sure. I will take the nine. Uh, are they just dead here on the crackback? Just target this. All right, they just take infinite. Oh, well, they take infinite off of that as well, but this is more fun. <laughs> uh, pretty funny. All right, Hourglass Coven. What a card. What a freaking card. And we go to two and one now. I mean, I'll be happy with what, four or five wins with this? It's fine. It's nothing exciting. But could be good enough. Game number four now. We are on the play. Hand looks decent. We'll play the map on turn two, but we're probably not going to be scrying for a little while since we have Trespasser and Gonti. Oh, 
once upon a time. So green, black. Haven's good. Let's go ahead and just trespass here. Okay. Did they hit a land off top? They did. Lucky them. Um, so let's use up our mana efficiently here. So kill the auger. Attack, eat the auger. And then we can scry. also killed their creature on their upkeep to flip it today, but I don't think that's worth it. That is A-OK. -okay. Liberator. That probably not, needs to die. Bottom that... Uh, let's draw naturally. And, hmm. I guess we can go kill the Liberator. Eat it. Play out the land for Bankbuster and Scry. That's good. You can flip the, uh, the map next turn and then start drawing with all of our stuff. Ooh, that's a really good sign for us. Cycling. Sheesh, they must, must not have much to do here. Gaunti and take a peek at what's going on. Alright. And I'm gonna go ahead and kill... Actually, no. I lied. Much better to save that for something else. Their, uh... Shade is not a relevant problem right now. So we can hit like Grey Merchant and something off of this, that would be good. And the funny thing is after I cast it, it'll go to their graveyard and then I can eat it with the Glutton. <laughs> yep, no blocks. What you got? <laughs> well, given that they cycled the previous turn, their, their hand must be pretty bad. Not sure what they could have, though. Like, they have access to currently, what, six mana, seven if they want to ma make a creature? Or rather, creatures. Oh, Yawgmoth is good. Probably not good enough here. And it costs them life to do this, but this is a cute combo where they can sack the shade, play a land, and then play the shade back out again. Okay. Right. Sure. Well, let's start off with this and see what we can hit. Cavalier plus spawn. I like it. So we can sack the Gaunti, kill the Yogmoth. I 
Oh, this is lethal, though. Right? Yep. Crew. Smack. GG's. Alright, let's go. That worked out rather well. <sighs> Three and one, we continue. Game number five incoming. How are we looking? That's a good one, two, three. We're on the draw, though, so uh, not as ideal, but that's okay. And this is a knight, too. Wait, that doesn't matter for that, but whatever. <laughs> the question is, is a turn two ex acquisition expert getting one card worth it? Probably not. Would be my guess. I think we're supposed to hold on to that until later where we can really uh, get something potentially more threatening. Hmm. Oh, we do have a warrior now though. So gutter bones into acquisition expert will hit two cards. That is unfortunate. Might just discard the acquisition expert now, I think. I could have held the gutter bones to discard it, but I think I want to make that play instead. So they're gonna get us to steal a creature from the graveyard. Hmm. Funny thing here is that if they steal my, uh, if they steal my acquisition expert, they get to unfortunately. Um, Take the Cavalier from my hand. I'm hoping they just take the Knight of the Ebon Legion, though. I'm actually surprised they didn't let the Karn die. Because they could have just let the Karn die and then... Uh, and then brought it back. Um... Uh, I guess we give him an extra forest. Six card, or rather four cards in their hand still. Oh, there's a Ren. Yeesh. Oh, this is actually really good for us. We get to kill both their creatures here. This is going to be a disgusting turn. We go Cavalier. Stack. Kill the token. Crew. Attack Karn, shoot Ren. Yeah, that's a disgusting play. <laughs> uh, pretty good, Sky Sovereign. Pretty good. Uh, Yara cannot sack itself. Oracle's a nice hit. Okay. Uh, that can only sacrifice another black creature, though. I think I'm supposed to kill the opportunist here first. Might as well take a peek at the last card in their hand. There. So they're drawing a chariot and a wolf. They hit double land off the top again. Oh. And they have a God Pharaoh's gift coming up? Oh my gosh. 
Wow, that's bad for us. They're dead pretty quickly, though. Just the Sky Sovereign plus the Drains, so... Supposed to kill the Ayara now with the Sovereign. Hopefully we draw another creature that can crew. Perfect. So we can lead back the Life Linker. And they don't have anything good to draw. Okay, kill that. They draw Gift, and they die, I believe. Dude, this boat is insane, man. So good. Just nothing good enough for them to get, though. Like, drawing Elspeth's Nightmare doesn't do anything. I guess they could have made a copy of the Morbid Opportunist, technically. I don't know why they're still playing. They know they're dead. Okay, there we go. 4 1 now, hey! Legitimately surprised. We haven't even done Grey Merchant nonsense yet. Nonsense yet. We've kind of just played like, black value creatures and gotten there. Game number what? Six? I think we're four and one, All right? Yeah. Good looking hand. One drop, two drop, three drop on the play. And who knows? Like, sometimes when you thought sees an opponent, if they've kept some kind of sketchy hand and you take like their one relevant card, it can sometimes just be GG. What are those sleeves? Olivia's uh, Attendance, I think it is? Hm. I haven't seen those ones before. They don't even move or flash or shine. What you got? Red, green, fatties. Wow. Leave them with Lelia. I... <sighs> yeah, I think Fable's too good. I mean, both of those cards are insane. We hopefully can find a way to deal with Lelia, though. All right, let's go Mindstone this turn. And then Bank Buster, draw a card next turn. This is unfortunate. I have nothing to do versus that turn 3 Lelia. Currently. Yep, so it's going to attack, hit me for 3. On. Okay. There we go. That's good. Yeah, I'm okay to get the uh, Yara online. Go ahead and just pass here now. Let 
that attack. Storm Seeker, that's fine. Uh, let's go draw with Mind Stone. Mm. Spawn. Drain them for one. Brew. Smash for four. Even we know they have two scary six drops, I really need to try to push as much pressure as I can, but looks like it's not going to be enough. They're one land away. Oof, yeah. And that's a pretty good stabilize, plus they can haste it up. Now oh, this got really bad really quickly for us. Sheesh. Did not find what we needed either. Crap. Excuse me. No, I didn't mute in time. Now hopefully the uh, sound thing picked it up. I guess we're just going to have to pass here and hope that they don't uh, draw a forest for Kogla. Obviously, we are in real bad shape. So they can fight my Ayara if they want to? I don't know, they're just going to double it in haste? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, man. Let's back another black creature. Uh, I guess let's crew. Chump, chump. I don't think we want to trade with that, right? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, this tramples too, of course. So take five, six. Auntie. Okay. Yeah, I mean, brutal. Given what we saw in their hand, we know they drew pretty darn well, but not much you can do about that. Yeah, good beats. Just did to literally everything. Yep, there's their Planeswalker. Or their Kogla, either way. GG's. Oh, man! Beating, beating, beating. I don't know if there was anything else I really realistically could have done there. Maybe I... No, playing a Yara instead of mine or instead of the Bankbuster drawing card doesn't do anything. Yeah, I don't know. Good, good. GG. On to game at number seven. Four and two though. We're on the play here. Okay, good curve out. Would love to find another land without needing to draw it off of the Bankbuster. Turn one gutter, turn two bank, turn three, three drops. Nice, did find the land too. Dryad Green Seeker, that's fine. Heavy. Crew. Smack for four. This is a good aggressive draw, that is for sure. Cultivate, yeah.
We kind of just think of the Bank Buster as like a two mana 4-4 four four in this deck. Kind of. Let's go Trespasser here. And the Trespasser individually crews the uh, Bank Buster, and then we get to attack with both. I'm assuming they're going to let me draw a card with Heavy. Because there's no way they're going to want to take 10. Well, they don't have access to double white, so I don't have to worry about a wrath like that. Well, now they have Dryad, so technically they could have double white. Okay, so Expert gets to peek at two cards, Rogue and Warrior available. Take their creature here, then I'm going to grasp their Dryad. Through the Bank Buster with the Expert and the Gutter Bone. And then attack with all, eating the Dryad, draining them for one. They're going to give me another life for sure. Sorry, another card for sure off of the heavy. Or they can just concede, yeah. Our pressure was way too great there on the play. Like, our curve out was kind of ridiculous. And our opponent didn't have any removal, so. That was always going to be a pretty quick one in that scenario. Five and two. Let's go, baby. Let's go. On to game number eight. Cannot keep that hand too slow. Go down to six. Where we will begrudgingly keep this. Because we're not going to go to five. Knight of the Ebon Legion. Mm, okay. Okay. I could go ahead and grasp it on turn two, and that would save me a life in the long term, but I think I'm going to scry here on turn two instead. Don't want that. Ah, uh, I'm going to let them untap with Crick Breaker, I think. Hope they just pump the knight. If they don't, then I'm not gonna bother. Let's see what they do. If they pass, that's fine. Just keep mapping. We'll keep a land, even though it's our utility land. This would be a, a good turn to run out the Bastion, though, to set up for the Cavalier. But I think we still want to grasp this turn instead. Oh. Now they're going to make a zombie, huh? Okay, at this point I'll go ahead and go for the uh, grasp then. That's also a zombie. Okay. Don't want that. I'm going to try to boat here and hope this resolves, but it feels like they have been holding open some kind of counter. But this also taxes their mana, so they can't Crypt Breaker if they do have counter for this. Nice. Well, that's just good. They 
discard the land. Rankle! Okay. Hmm, that is annoying. I guess we have to discard the Bastion here. Oh, they were holding up Exclude, I see. Oh, that was a fantastic draw, too. Alright, so now we get to... Expert. Take one of their two cards. Okay, and we get to go Cavalier, Sack, kill Rankle, and we get to crew the boat, attack, kill the zombie. Very nice. And all of a sudden, big swings. We can still draw a card with the treasure map next turn too. Or whatever, Treasure Cove. That's a good draw. We can pump up the Knight and then crew the Sky Sovereign with it. Like Gale's misdirection or something? No? Okay. What you got? Overcharged Amalgam. So they're going to stop the crew ability. Okay. And then I just recrew it with this instead. Interesting. Sure. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, they get to kill my knight. That actually means they don't die unless I draw another way to crew it. Oh, okay. I mean, obviously they were still in a miserable spot, but we will take it. Let's go. Six and two, the final boss, one way or another. Trophy or six and three, fate is in our hands. Final round we go. The moment of truth. We are on the draw with a hand that's a little bit slow, but I think something that we can probably keep. Have a turn two removal spell. Probably gonna lead on shakedown heavy on turn three and start trying to smash for a bunch or have them draw us extra cards. Red, blue. Hmm. Okay. Well, they might be a slower deck. More controlly. Double bottom. Nope here. Just gonna run down the 6-4 here. If they're letting me hit them for 6 damage, obviously that's good. If they're letting me draw a card, that's great as well. Sure. Not even waiting to draw a card, but I guess they have something to do this turn then is, that, is what that means.
Ah, do they have ephemerate here? They do. That's disgusting. What a draw. Sheesh. Okay. So I'm going to have to just grasp that uh, mold drifter. Wow. Very nice. Hopefully I can draw something in addition. Yeah. Otherwise we just have to kill that. Man, we went from looking and feeling great to probably dying now. We are drawing our lands well, though. Eh, I'm just going to run out the shakedown again. Sure. So bounce, play out the brazen, yeah. We are getting controlled. I think we wait on the uh, invoke. Man, I really want to find that six land so I can double spell or just slam down the uh, hourglass. Ugh, discover the formula. Yeah, this is the issue with me having no early pressure. The opponent was just able to dirtle out. That's probably game over. Kept a slow hand on the draw, definitely got punished. Three, get a treasure, yep. You know what I didn't do once this draft? Play Grey Merchant. I drew it once or twice, but it was just never relevant. Oh yeah, this is... Okay, I mean, the good news is, if Invoke Despair resolves, it does kill Teferi and one of their creatures. Let's try to attack the Teferi first and see if they just give me a card or whatever. I assume that's the right play for them to do. Yeah. Dead to any counter here. Nothing I can do about it. Really needed to have a hand that pressured the opponent more and wow, we did not pressure them at all. Okay. Well, that wasn't awful. Still wasn't great. Or rather, we're still not looking great, but that wasn't bad. Maybe I just run out the shoulder next turn and pray. Put it is deep in the tank. Adversary, and they can kick blink of an eye and whatnot. Oh, yeah, that's gross. 
Take four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Put me to three. Akka goes back to their hand at least. They do make a treasure though. So how can I survive this? I guess I just need to play Coven and pray again. Oh, right, they can cast that for one, so there's actually nothing I can do. Alright, good beats. Yeah, we got smashed. They weren't as controlly as I thought. They had some more aggressive elements, but my hand didn't do anything for way too long, and they were just able to uh, get me too good. Alright. But again, I'm not unhappy. Six and three with mono black. Good stuff. Sky Sovereign pulled weight. Gray Merchant sadly didn't do much. But hey, oh, Hourglass Coven obviously did a lot as well. That was a fun little change of pace though. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you back tomorrow for some more. Peace out.